Hi, welcome to the Avocet Math video series on counting for the AMC. Now, counting is one of the math skills that is not covered well at most high schools, but it comes in handy for the math and science classes that you'll take in college. The tools for counting are simple and don't require more than an Algebra 1 background, but applying these tools correctly can be tricky and requires a bit of practice. The good news is that the tools require very little memorization and once learned are easy to retain. In this video, I'm going to go over a brief overview of the four basic tools of counting. This is meant more as an introduction to the concepts and terminology and not intended to explain them in any detail. I just want to give you a view of the landscape and let you see just how little there is to actually remember. Toward the end of this video, I'll refer you to the Art of Problem Solving videos and text for further study. Most of the remainder of this video series will discuss solutions to several typical AMC counting problems. So with that, let's take a look at our four basic counting principles. The first principle is often called the addition principle. And this has to do with dividing sets into subsets and counting up the pieces. And the simplest example I can come up with is a classroom of children. And we want to count the number of children in our classroom. And one strategy is to divide the classroom into two subsets of boys and girls, count the boys and the girls separately, and we quickly find that the number of children is given simply by the boys plus the girls. Now, this is the simplest example where we have two subsets that are non-overlapping, but we can apply these addition principles to subsets that are overlapping, and the simplest example I can come up with there is a slight variation where we have a classroom consisting entirely of math majors and uh, physics majors. So here again, we can express the number of students S as the number of math majors plus the number of physics majors, but we have to adjust this sum down by the number of students who are both math majors and physics majors as they were, dis they were double counted in the original sum. So we write that adjustment by subtracting the term uh, math and physics from the original sum. Now this is the case of two subsets, but these principles can be applied to three subsets and beyond, and that's discussed further in some of the sources I'll mention later. Now the second principle I'd like to mention is usually called the multiplication principle. And the simplest example I can come up with there is a case where we are looking at points in the xy plane. And we're forming these points with x values in the set of, say, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and y values in the set of, say, 1, three, and four. And it's pretty easy to see that the points formed create a rectangular grid. And the total number of points is given simply by the number of available x value choices times the number of available y value choices. And in this case, the number of xy points is simply four times 3, which is equal to 12. Now, this concept of taking an x set or a set of x values and multiplying it by all possible combinations of the y set values is sometimes called a compound set. And it's also called a direct product set. Now the third principle I'd like to mention is called the permutation principle. And the simplest example I can come up with there is a case of uh, five runners in the finals of some running event. So I'll call the runners A, B, C, D, and E. And the question we have is we'd like to 
find out the total number of ways we can select three of the five runners and award the gold, silver, and bronze medal, which I denote with these three labeled bins. And the math, it turns out, for this problem is basically uh, an application of the multiplication principle for counting sets. And the result we get is that the total number of ways is given by 5 times 4 times 3. And this is often written in the uh, nomenclature of factorials as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. And the 5 times 4 times 3, of course, is equal to 60. Now, the, the last principle I want to mention is the combination principle. And this turns out to be a simple variant and an extension of the permutation principle. So here, instead of selecting three of the five runners to award the gold, silver, and bronze medal, what if instead we were just selecting three runners and we didn't care what order they were once selected? So instead of putting them into ordered bins, what if we just selected them and put them into one of each unordered bins and we didn't care what order they they were selected in. So it turns out we can take the permutation calculation and just adjust that down by the number of ways that we can um, arrange three of the runners within these three unordered bins. And so the math for that is pretty simple. Turns out the number of combinations is given by the permutation result divided by the number of ways we can arrange three items into the three bins. And again, this is often written in the uh, notation of factorials as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 3 factorial. And again, if you work out this number, it works out to 10. So these counting principles seem very simple in the way that I've described them, but they can be very difficult to apply correctly in the AMC problems. The AMC word problems often require multiple counting principles in combination, and you'll see that in the AMC problems to follow. So I just wanted to say one other thing. I wanted to mention um, the issue of probability briefly. And I just want to mention that almost all probability questions in the AMC can be solved with the basic ratio definition of a probability as the number of event outcomes of interest divided by the number of all possible outcomes and as long as you take some care to count the numerator and the denominator in some equal probable way then this ratio formula works out really well and essentially it reduces a probability question into simply a counting problem of counting the number of event outcomes and the number of all possible outcomes and simply dividing so with that brief introduction of the counting principles, let me refer you to the best uh, two sources for further study. So on the YouTube side, uh, I would recommend uh, the playlist AOPS Introduction to Counting. Again, that's a, a YouTube playlist. And that playlist consists of about 80 videos, uh, about 40 of which uh, you probably need to look at for the, for the syllabus of the ABA AMC. And uh, that playlist uh, goes over these four counting principles in roughly the order shown. So it's a very good playlist to explore these concepts further. And on the text side, I would recommend just the uh, art of problem solving. Uh, 
And uh, I think there's about uh, six or seven chapters that deal very well with uh, the issues of counting and probability. So check that out. And, uh, you know, with a bit of practice, uh, I think you'll be an expert in no time. So good luck with that and take care.